Today we are going to start uh, chapter number 17. It's about the uh, <coughs> estimating process. <coughs> so allow me to say Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassadli amri wa hulukdata min lisani yattahu qawli wa salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. So today we are going to discuss uh, estimating process and uh, this uh, topic is very important you know if you are going to graduate uh, and if you join a company um, so immediately you know every day companies are building uh, projects or constructing projects uh, so they need to uh, they need to cast concrete you know on daily basis so you need to order uh, concrete from the uh, from the batching plant so uh, every day you have to look the drawings and uh, and order how much uh, concrete uh, you know uh, and how much concrete you need to order uh, um, for the for two days uh, uh, pour you know for casting uh, concrete. So in this sense, uh, this chapter is very important uh, for every engineer that uh, they can uh, read the drawings and calculate the quantity of concrete uh, and if even they have to prepare um, bid submission so they can prepare the estimate uh, for their bid uh, for their project uh, so how they, they should uh, find out the quantities uh, of the materials uh, uh, for the project uh, and how they should make uh, pricing and prepare the estimate so uh, with this, uh, this chapter is very important uh, and uh, I hope every engineer will go through and uh, uh, read it, uh, you know, listen uh, this uh, carefully. So to my students also that uh, if they, you know, they, they have difficulty for understanding in the class, so they can listen this video again and, uh, you know, repeat uh, their, their lecture. Uh, so, to make clear their uh, concepts again uh, before their uh, final exam or, or mid one or mid two exam. So let's move uh, forward with the simple, simple things. Uh, estimating construction cost. Okay, estimating is the process of looking into the future and trying to predict uh, project cost and resource requirement. So like we if we prepare the estimator so we have to like how much a project is going to cost and how much is the requirement of the resources like how much money we need how much material we need uh, how many equipment we need uh, how many man hours uh, uh, labor force we need uh, so we are going to calculate and then prepare our estimate an estimate represents the cost flight cost flight plan that will be followed by the contractor in achieving profit. So like uh, if you travel to somewhere, you have your uh, flight plan. So similarly, this is uh, for the contractor. Uh, this, uh, when they submit the bid uh, and they have this uh, prepared their estimate, they often they make offer uh, a price for the project uh, that they will be ready to complete this project with this much price. So it means they are like then a flight plan for the contractor. And if they get the project and complete this project, so they know, know that they will, uh, if their estimate is good, so they will make a profit. But if their estimate is not good, then maybe then the contractor will make loss. Major reason for the failure of construction contracting firm is incorrect and unrealistic estimating and bidding practices. So see if, uh, if uh, the construction companies, uh, they are going to fail. Uh, so it means the uh, major reason, one of the major reason is uh, that they are preparing their estimate. Uh, their estimates are not uh, realistic. Uh, they are not correct. Uh, and if they submit a uh, wrong estimate uh, so for, uh, for quantities and their pricing, so they will not be able to make money and companies uh, may go for bankrupt, you know, so the companies may fail, you know, they will not be making profit and it will be difficult for them to survive. A consistent procedure uh, or set of steps uh, for preparing an estimate is needed to minimize errors and achieve reliable results. So it, uh, this, uh, if we learn about uh, estimating process, uh, so it means uh, we need uh, uh, consistent uh, procedure step by step uh, to prepare our estimate uh, and that it should have minimum error and we should uh, achieve like reliable results. You know? 
So how we will achieve reliable results and all they are giving the example like if 20 estimators, 20 estimators, uh, they are going to work on the same set of plans and specifications, the estimate should be more or less the same. So see if you have a good, uh, you know, um, uh, you can prepare a good estimate, so it means uh, if 20 estimators, uh, 20 engineers, uh, uh, they are going to prepare an estimate for their project. Uh, so by looking at uh, their, uh, examining their drawings and specifications, so their estimate should be more or less, they should be reaching at the same number, uh, amount of quantities in the price, you know, so it should be more or less the same. So let's move forward. <coughs> An estimate is the calculation of the contractor's cost, including material, labor, equipment, did offer also include contractor's profit. So what is our estimate is always a, it's a, a contractor's cost for the project, you know. So how much uh, um, cost for the material is required, for the labor cost, for the equipment cost, uh, and how much uh, they, they put for the risk uh, and their, for the, their profit, you know. So it will include all the direct cost and indirect cost. Okay, so we'll go a little bit in what is the direct cost and indirect cost. In construction, the cost of materials, labor, equipment, all directly involved efforts or expenses for the cost of it are called direct cost. Okay, so this is like the things that are going to become part of the project. So cost of material and cost of labor and cost of all those equipment. Uh, so we call this, uh, that it's uh, become part of the project. Uh, so uh, we call them indirect cost. Okay. Now what are the indirect costs? Cost for those activities or services that may benefit the current or more than one project. Uh, indirect costs are those that are related to the management, insurance, taxes, uh, maintenance, uh, overhead for site office or, or overhead for the uh, headquarter office, head office. Costs of personal uh, security cost, uh, administration cost, cost of utilities, uh, cost of uh, utilities, uh, like uh, say for example, telephone cost uh, or mobile phone, electricity, a monthly bill uh, or gas, um, for heating uh, for, the, for the site office. Uh, so all these costs are, we call it indirect cost. Indirect cost, uh, yeah. Uh, so then these uh, indirect costs are like percentage of the direct cost. So we can first we calculate the direct cost of the um, project and then how much percentage will become like indirect cost maybe, you know, 15% or 20% of direct cost uh, or 10%. Uh, so then we increase all those items of direct cost by including the, the indirect cost. So then we can also include how much uh, we have to keep money for the risk or for the um, profit of the company. So we will increase all those items in the bill of quantities uh, to make it the total project cost. Now, the process of determining uh, the required material quantities on a job is referred as a quantity takeoff or quantity survey. Okay, so if we are uh, reading the drawings uh, and from drawings we are going to determine how much uh, quantity of concrete is required. So from we multiply length width height. Uh, so this way, we, if we are uh, how many doors, uh, how many windows, uh, okay, how much uh, concrete. Uh, um, so uh, this is, we call it a quantity surveying or quantity takeoff. But if we multiply those quantities with the rates, uh, with the price uh, per unit, so then we can get the estimate. So, so quantity surveying is just uh, finding out the uh, total quantities. Okay. Estimate is uh, to um, have a cost of those quantities also and the total estimate, okay, total money required to uh, build the project. Let's move forward. Uh, so now uh, there are uh, sometimes uh, my students, they have a confusion about what is mean by design drawings, working drawings, or construction drawings, uh, or shop drawings. Uh, so I would like to make these things uh, clear to them. Uh, let's see, it's, uh, the definition we have written here is uh, working drawings are those issued by the engineer or tech to the contractor. 
such drawings uh, are the final stage of design process such drawings are the final stage of uh, the design process they are referred to as final design drawings or construction drawings they contain enough detail to fully describe the character of the structure to be built and and enough for the contractor or bidder to estimate the amount of time labor material and equipment needed to complete the work sometimes vertical drawings are also stamped as issued for construction so no whatever you are a designer or architect they are going to prepare those drawings and they are going to issue for the contractors on the basis of that a contractor are going to prepare their bid and submit their bid or tender so then they, they are going to so all those drawings uh, they are called working drawings okay so they may be these are like the final design drawings uh, what they have issued okay. sometimes these drawings are uh, good in detail and can be used for uh, construction so these same, same drawing uh, like for small projects uh, uh, contractor use uh, these drawings uh, as uh, like uh, for the construction okay but sometimes these uh, drawings uh, give a little de detail like there is a for column so column is just uh, you know shown show the number of bars and the section but column on typically is uh, built like a upper part and lower part and there is a bar bending schedule how many uh, um, uh, reinforcement and how those bars will be bent uh, for especially for beams uh, uh, you know so how much will be the cut length and how much how the shape of those each uh, rebar so for that uh, contractor is going to prepare those uh, shop drawings based on these uh, design drawings or working drawings so what is shop drawings are prepared by the contractor at site based on the working drawings and according to the detail required by site person for a particular piece of work the engineer consultant demands shop drawings for approval prior to actual construction the shop drawings are issued by the contractor and and fabricators to know how the component will be built or manufactured okay, uh, and installed during the construction process okay. so if these uh, shop drawings are prepared by the contractor uh, so it means the contractor have to get approval uh, for the, all those shop drawings and uh, a consultant will check those drawings and give approval you know so who prepared it who checked it and who is going to approve it so at least three engineer should check and sign and, and they will see uh, each bar so these shop drawings will have all the bar bending schedule on those uh, cut length uh, and details for installation if there is a like drawing for steel structure or steel frame or if there is a lifting mechanism for by crane is required so this is this will have all the details you know and sometimes these drawings are like issued uh, to the manufacturer like a uh, steel factory to fabricate those uh, elements for trusses or for uh, steel frames or whatever you know sections uh, we need on construction so then for fabrication also we need these uh, uh, for manufacturer or whoever to fabricate we need these uh, drawings okay, uh, shop drawings so they are all based on the uh, design drawing it will have uh, every kind of detail you know for any any joints or any uh, reinforcement uh, detail bar bending schedule or their cut length uh, so um, and this should be approved by the consultant okay with this let's move forward so this is like we are putting the estimating process here you can see the yellow is just showing yellow color is just showing the start and end point and green is like the technical estimating steps and this other color is non technical estimating steps okay so this is um, like the dark um, blue or greenish uh, color so num so let's start from number 1 is a uh, project initiation okay we are going to start the project second is we should be clear about the scope uh, of the work okay we should be clear about the scope of the work uh, and we should uh, have a very clear uh, uh, like what we need to pre estimate planning so so we should visit the uh, visit the site uh, or see we will discuss these things uh, pre estimate planning in the next slide 
So then there will be uh, number four as we have to do uh, from those uh, uh, drawings to so take the quantity take off. Okay. So what are the item description? Okay. So make the quantity take off. Then we put all those uh, quantity take off on uh, data source and costing. How much uh, cost for those item number five? And how much is uh, we calculate the direct cost? Okay. So the direct cost uh, can we go to the summary uh, sheet, uh, summary and cover sheet. Uh, then these, uh, um, you know, we should check uh, again uh, documentation and checking. So management should review that uh, because sometimes uh, some companies, uh, uh, company management, they have their overhead cost uh, is high. You know, uh, big company they have overhead cost more, or small company they have their overhead cost less, uh, or they may need to make decision that how much profit they want. You know, maybe five percent, or eight percent, or two percent, or ten percent. So, so this is like management review of that estimate and then uh, estimate uh, uh, issue and filing okay so we will uh, discuss this uh, prepare there that estimate then it's the uh, last uh, like uh, we should have a uh, cost feedback and continue improvement of that estimate so, so here we have to revise uh, um, what item are rates uh, getting from our subcontractors uh, uh, so we have to make that uh, uh, improve it uh, uh, based on the uh, management review and uh, uh, whatever the issues discussed, uh, like uh, how much we have to include the uh, uh, indirect cost or uh, profit uh, overheads for the company. So this will be the uh, process of estimating and for preparation of uh, estimate for a project. So let's move to the next slide is uh, um, before you start okay so now you see the before we start for uh, preparing an estimator we should get um, familiar with all those uh, and understand all those uh, plans and specifications plans uh, word, word they are going to use for drawings okay? so the um, estimator they should read all those uh, documents issued by the uh, consultant uh, or the designer you know so they should check the instruction to bidders. So what are the instructions issued to the bidders? Uh, this is like really a booklet. A booklet. Uh, so they need to read that one, and then they do uh, read the book of specification, do the analysis, uh, understand uh, all those uh, specifications, criteria required for material standards uh, and workmanship. So general content uh, of drawings. So then they they should get some year uh, about the drawings uh, and their uh, especially joints and details, uh, uh, connections, uh, subcontractors and vendors. So they should know who, who are their subcontractors and suppliers uh, for supplying the materials, uh, um, and who are their subcontractors for electrical work or mechanical work or uh, mm -hmm. for any uh, you know if you are going to sublet any any other work uh, like um, uh, HVAC or maybe civil work, you know, filing work or something. So must visit the site, okay? Have a look uh, to the site that uh, whether it is located in a congested area, how is access road to the site uh, approach, uh, whether they can uh, bring the trucks, uh, can come to the site day and night, or there are traffic restrictions uh, in urban areas, in congested areas, you know, where high rise buildings and your plot is also in that, uh, very, uh, there are already high rise buildings uh, uh, surrounding your site, uh, so you have to construct another uh, building. So you need to look uh, the site, you know, and see you know, what are the difficult could be uh, for the project to build uh, in that area. You know. So how about the, you know, to get connections, access road or um, electricity connection, water supply connection, and other things. What it determines and estimate accuracy, okay? So, so how uh, accuracy will depends uh, how you understand if the scope of the work is clear or if the project is scope, uh, uh, volume of work is not clear, you know? How much, what is included in the project, what we have to do and what we don't need to do, okay? So scope should be clear. Then time to prepare the estimate, okay? How much time we can spend with the, uh, how much to keep the accuracy in the estimate. Quality of cost data, from where we are going to get the cost data, you know, who are, uh, like if, uh, is it a reliable rate? So we should compare with the least uh, three uh, vendors, uh, how much they are going to give a cost for this, uh, this item. So, 
so uh, uh, estimator skill and methodology employed is also like uh, and your estimator uh, person who is preparing the estimate how much experience they have how much skill they have how much uh, how many estimates they have prepared before and what methodology he is going to apply whether he is using spreadsheet or using software or uh, uh, by hand, so they, uh, what methodology they are uh, using. So we need to be careful about all these things. Uh, that how we can show, make sure that our estimate is uh, more accurate. How uh, is uh, going to represent a true sense realistic estimate? Uh, so this, these are the things that uh, before we start, we should be clear about uh, our project. So let's uh, um, again uh, estimate consideration uh, before uh, starting the estimate with project size. Okay, project size is going to matter. Uh, like uh, what they say, the learning curve. Uh, when people uh, repeat our task, uh, they get better and faster, reducing the cost of labor. Okay. So project size, if the project is, uh, you know, every project there is a lot of uh, things. They are repetition work. So first time uh, that labor, uh, they are going to take more time, you know, like say for the foundation. Okay. So if the, all the, the next foundations are similar, similar foundations, so then uh, labor force will learn how to prepare this uh, foundation. Okay. Or the first time you know, to cast the first column is uh, difficult, but uh, once uh, labor gets uh, learning, so next time uh, building the column um, or beams or slabs and so if they are similar uh, repetition work so then labor uh, get uh, you know used to and uh, they they learn and they they can perform better and faster and they're uh, reducing the cost of labor so they can do uh, better so project size uh, matters you know how many similar similar elements uh, standard elements are there uh, for construction Project quality, a okay, high quality project to create a specific image. Okay, so project quality also uh, is important that you need to understand. Sometimes, you know, uh, some projects, uh, they are uh, like uh, uh, countries, they are preparing uh, like uh, is a symbol for the country, you know, okay. like in Saudi Arabia Kingdom Tower, you know, so uh, or in Australia, like the Opera House, you know, so. These kind of projects, uh, so they are like a, a symbol. Uh, so now they like Saudi Arabia building the tallest building in Jeddah, or there is in Dubai, you know, Burj Khalifa. So these kind of project, like uh, it's an image for the country, you know. So I think, uh, it's uh, we have to be careful that image is more important, you know. So. Uh, and we have to maintain a high quality of the project. So project uh, location also matters. Uh, material cost or factor of availability, competition, way of transportation, labor cost vary with location, level mm -hmm. of training. Okay. So this is also like, uh, you know, uh, here is the project is located. Uh, uh, so, um, and uh, how much uh, the trained labor force is available in that area. Our material has to be go from the mm -hmm. and go to that uh, uh, remote uh, area site. So there will be additional transportation cost uh, um, for transporting materials from that main urban area to that uh, construction site. So location of the project is also matters, you know, in, in our estimate. Then time. When will construction begin? Okay. Uh, how much time is allocated to build the project? Uh, labor and material costs escalate with time. You know, say, say, for example, in Saudi Arabia, they are building this metro project. Uh, before it was five years, then there is a three years more extension. You know, for these kind of projects, when there is a long uh, uh, time period is involved so with the passage of time, but labor and material costs is going to escalate. It's going to increase with the passage of time. Maybe petrol prices will go up, uh, things like this. So it's, uh, time is also important that uh, how much is the duration of the project. So then market conditions, okay, uh, market conditions also matters uh, like in a market without much work. If the market is, there is not much work uh, in the market, so then contractor may bid low with little profit to cover overhead and keep their staff, uh, uh, their, uh, uh, you know, resources busy. So employed, um, if there is not much work, uh, so the contractor will be ready to bid uh, with little profit uh, um, 
to keep their uh, you know equipment busy and labor force busy and their engineers busy uh, so they want to keep themselves in the market but if there is a lot of work in the market every company is full of work uh, you know the economy is going good uh, and there is a boost of construction and so then every company will try to put more profit because uh, uh, they are sure they will get the projects you know there are many projects many options are available for the, all those uh, construction companies uh, like a couple of years ago it was the situation in saudi arabia that uh, every company was full of uh, work uh, but these, you know as little as economy has gone, gone down so then there is more competition so this is like an estimate we have to consider these things before finalizing preparing our estimate so what are the overall situation you know in which situation we are working you know and our estimate should also reflect with all those things so let's see as a estimating time versus accuracy okay so uh, how is uh, what's the relation of uh, the estimate with the time and with the accuracy okay and what are the types of uh, estimates so what they say is that if you go and start from here on the x axis is the is the time and on y axis is the uh, accuracy level okay, accuracy level so what they say if you are preparing a rough order uh, of magnitude estimate uh, estimate type is rough order of magnitude estimate uh, so you can prepare this kind of estimate in just uh, in a number of uh, minutes okay but if you are preparing a square foot or cubic foot estimate or square meter or meter cube estimate so it may need just hours to prepare this kind of estimate and similarly assembly estimate or system estimate you need to have just need days to prepare this estimate but if you are preparing a unit price estimate then you need you know weeks number of weeks time in this estimate so what this is when you are if you are preparing a rough order a magnitude estimate so accuracy level is plus minus 20 percent so it means your estimate could be you know okay if the cost as you prepare 100 so it could go up to 120 or 80. Uh, if the square foot estimate accuracy level is plus minus 15 percent assembly estimate uh, is uh, uh, plus minus 10 percent okay but you know price estimate always based on the drawings uh, so it's uh, like a detailed estimate uh, so we can have a accuracy level of a plus minus five percent so now we go in detail a little bit more about what is the rough order estimate or square foot estimate or assembly estimate or unit price estimate okay so in fact we are going to discuss these uh, types of estimate so if we let's take the first one is rough order of magnitude estimate so used for initial project planning based on historic data unit is number of beds or kilometer of roads okay so cost how much is cost per, per, uh, per bed or how much is cost per room okay or how much is cost per kilometer of road if we know the width so then this kind of estimate we can prepare uh, with uh, you know within uh, just minutes uh, and uh, accuracy level will be plus minus uh, 20 percent okay so rough order uh, estimate uh, is uh, like based on the historical data so contractors who are you know involved in construction and they have a lot of experience uh, they know that uh, you know they, they have to build a, a hotel you know with uh, 800 rooms so what is the cost of one room and what is the cost of this uh, new hotel will be if they have 800 rooms in, inside so this is uh, like they can or if they know the cost of road um, uh, that width is this much and the length is this much uh, so per kilometer cost is uh, they know this thing and they can prepare tell for the new project in just minutes uh, that uh, the new project will cost this much so let's see is a square foot estimate based upon building use the unit is a square foot or square meter of building area so used when approximate size and basic parameters are known so accuracy level is plus minus 15 percent so this is based on the covered area covered area like for building is a uh, the area under the slab okay. area under the slab so how much is the slab area so if there is a multi-story building so every floor will add the slab area and then 
So how much is the cost per square meter or per, per square feet? So by this way, all those uh, from the historical data, uh, contractors are available that they have constructed these five projects in the past. So per square meter cost or per square foot cost was this much. Now new project is how many square feet uh, of covered area. So then they can multiply with the, that per square feet of cost. So they can tell the cost of the new project. It's very common uh, that uh, similarly for the road project, uh, they know how much is the cost uh, of the road per square feet. Okay? So they just multiply the length of the road and width of the road, so they, and then total area they know, and how much uh, they know the previous roads uh, with this kind of uh, structure, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, like uh, surfacing or um, base course, upgrade, and so with that uh, structure of, uh, so they know the cost per square foot, so they can multiply uh, per square foot uh, cost or per square meter, and they can tell the road cost of the road uh, for the new project. Similarly, for the bridges, you know, per square foot, uh, like a bridge for the elevated road or this way, if they, they fly over, so per square meter cost of that uh, flyover, they, they calculate the local length of the flyover and what's the width. Uh, they know the area and they can calculate the per square meter uh, or per square foot cost. Uh, so they can tell this uh, in just within a minutes uh, uh, that uh, how much this project uh, will be going to cost. You know? So experienced contractors, they are very expert in these uh, uh, situations. So let's see the assembly estimate uh, design development stage. So we prepare uh, assembly estimate that design development stage group of individual items combined into a convenient unit of measure. The unit is foundation, the roofing, the electrical system. Um, so uh, accuracy level is plus minus uh, uh, 10%. So we, we apply this assembly estimate. So sometimes, you know, we, we need to know that how much, what is the assembly. So we can uh, like uh, uh, convenient unit of measure, you know, is one assembly. Say for example, if we take electrical work, like if we use the uh, air conditioning system, so air conditioning separate unit, uh, including separate unit plus the outside unit, uh, like fan, and with the cables, so everything is one assembly. Okay. So then, like uh, one electric pole with all the lights and, and cables, uh, it will be one, one assembly. Uh, so usually for electrical and mechanical work, we use this uh, uh, assembly uh, estimate like all the allied uh, that uh, main thing and what is the cables and wiring and other things involved. Uh, so it's a, a complete uh, assembly. You know? Similarly, we can use this for the uh, like uh, how much is the cost of the one foundation and multiply with the number of the foundation or one, how much cost for roof treatment uh, uh, so, uh, for the uh, electrical work. Uh, so we can use this uh, uh, assembly estimate to prepare the uh, uh, estimate. You know. So let's move forward with the next is a uh, unit price estimate. Okay. For this, we need uh, you know time. So this is uh, requires working drawings and specification. Okay. So it means uh, for this estimate, uh, we need a uh, design. Uh, those uh, design drawings are working drawings. You know, working drawing as I have explained before. So they are sometimes uh, design drawings. Uh, uh, whatever the drawings uh, issued from the uh, consultant side to the um, to the contractor uh, for preparation of the bid, uh, so those they the four drawings. Okay? So we need those drawings. Uh, it can be done at various stages of drawings and specifications. Okay, so I, so because we are getting this estimate based on those drawings, so this uh, we can get in good uh, you know with more accuracy and we have. Uh, uh, like time for prepare um, for the bid submission. Okay, uh, sometimes they give uh, 30 days for the bid submission, or six days, or 90 days to submit the bid. So consultants, uh, and then we can involve all those uh, subcontractors. Uh, uh, we can get uh, uh, good rates, uh, comparative with the statement, or comparative rates from different companies. Uh, so we can prepare a good estimate based on those uh, drawings, uh, working drawings. So we can prepare a, a, a unit price estimate. Okay? So we will calculate the quantities and see how much is the cost of uh, unit price. Uh, multiply with the, the unit price with the total quantity so we can have a, a unit price estimate. 
So let's see more. There are uh, more, more types of estimator that we can use. Uh, that we call it a, uh, like conceptual estimate. So estimating method vary in accordance with the level of design detail that are available to the estimators. So conceptual estimate. What is the conceptual estimate? Based on square foot or square meter of floor area, the representative unit is multiplied by the price per unit to obtain a gross estimate. So this is like conceptual estimate. Uh, uh, same like we have uh, discussed a uh, uh, square foot estimate or square meter estimate. So accuracy level is uh, uh, plus minus 15 percent. After once we have the concept uh, estimate, um, like it will be a model, you know. Uh, so now we are clear that this structure will be a steel structure or a concrete structure, uh, you know, or how is the model of the uh, bridge uh, uh, intersection. Uh, uh, so uh, we are going to decide these things, you know, for that uh, uh, the project. So main, main things uh, are clear that uh, what kind of structure will be. Then we, based on that uh, model, so we are going to prepare a preliminary estimate. Okay, It is prepared by the architect engineer to reflect expected cost based on more definitive data or on preliminary design, 40% completion of the total design. Between. So accuracy level is from plus minus 15% to plus minus 10% accuracy level. So this is like uh, if uh, you are an um, architect or engineer or your designer is going to prepare this estimate for the purpose to let the owner understand that how much this project is going to cost. So when 40% uh, um, design is, uh, uh, is ready, so then they can uh, make means main main things for the project are ready, and then they can give idea to the. Uh, um, to the owner uh, that this project will cost this much so owner can look for his budget uh, and make adjustment you know to, uh, at this stage so they can make changes in the design if they need to uh, adjust according to the uh, budget uh, or the money owner want to spend for the project now when uh, this uh, preliminary estimate is ready so then uh, is a engineer estimate again uh, uh, engineer or architect to produce the final engineer estimate indicating the total job cost minus markup so accuracy level is uh, plus minus 10 percent now engineer uh, has produced all the drawings okay? so they are ready to issue these uh, uh, those drawings uh, to the uh, companies uh, construction companies for the bidding purposes okay? So uh, now the engineer will prepare the estimate when whole design is ready, okay. but without including the profit. Okay. So it will be like a direct cost uh, uh, from the engineer side that this much will be a cost uh, and not including the profit. Okay. But they will include the uh, indirect cost also, but not uh, with, the, uh, with profit or with the risk. So the you know the owner understand that uh, the project cost will be like this. But when the when the contractor will prepare their estimate uh, based on this, uh, so then a consultant can compare uh, uh, bid submission estimate with his own estimate uh, that uh, how the contractor has submitted the estimate, whether it's uh, is um, accurate or too high or too low. You know, so they can uh, compare it with the engineer's estimate. You know. Now, the, uh, when once these drawings are ready, so they have issued these drawings uh, and the contractor has taken those drawings. Uh, so maybe consultant had given them uh, uh, 60 days to prepare the bid. Uh, so then contractor will prepare the bid estimate. On the basis of the final drawings and specifications, uh, contractor will prepare his estimate by including his markup and profit and risk. So contractor will uh, prepare his uh, estimate whatever they have issued the drawings or they have um, consultant have prepared the bill of quantities so now contractor has the most experience you know because they know how to build the project what is the construction process involved and how they have to get material and how much equipment will be involved how much labor will be involved so the and then how much their uh, uh, site of cost or overhead cost or there is the insurance cost or maybe whatever you know the, they will pay to the engineers uh, to the uh, um, they have to pay bill uh, during the 
are they have to pay rent telephone bill mobile bill or electricity so all these uh, uh, indirect cost and overheads uh, uh, and their uh, risk uh, and profit so this uh, uh, contractor will submit uh, their estimate uh, for the project based on those uh, uh, drawings that have been issued by the uh, engineer or the architect okay, or the consultant so this estimate is uh, because contractor has the most experienced person uh, how to build these projects they have past experience so this uh, estimate is usually have accuracy level is plus minus uh, five percent so now let's see the detailed estimate we are going to discuss in the next slide inshallah so for one more thing is uh, usually you know when contractor bid for the projects uh, so sometimes they win the project sometimes the every contractor is not going to win maybe you know maybe uh, seven or eight contractors submit submitted the bid for the project so only one contractor will will get the project so other seven they their bid uh, like uh, their bid bid or uh, bid bond should be returned you know? So it means, but those companies who are participating in the bidding process, so they spend money. They spend uh, uh, from their head office uh, like two, three months, uh, sixty days, uh, or whatever. Their engineers were working on those uh, those uh, drawings for preparation of the bid estimate, but but uh, only one company will get. So other company will not get. So it's uh, so bid preparation is going to cost money to every contractor. Now, how much this cost for every project is a uh, contractor's cost for estimating a bid is approximately 20, uh, 0.25% or it's uh, one fourth, uh, one fourth percent of the total bid price. Okay. So, um, for example, there is a contract price is uh, 100 million and we multiply it uh, 0.25 percent uh, so 0.25 divided by 100 so multiply it so it means a uh, bid preparation uh, is going to cost to uh, the contractor uh, 250 thousand uh, dollars or uh, real whatever the currency you know from that uh, uh, contract price so this cost must be recovered as overhead or job that are one so this cost, you know, when they, they win this uh, project, uh, so contractor has to recover this cost. You know, we, they, for like last time, they three projects they submitted bid, but they were unsuccessful to get the project. So now, when the fourth time they they were able to win the uh, project cost, it means to uh, how much overheads for their uh, their uh, headquarter. Uh, so they need to recover those uh, costs also. Uh, when they are going to get the project okay let's move uh, try to understand what is detailed estimate preparation okay so when we are going to prepare detailed estimates so it means uh, we have all the drawings uh, so and then we can prepare a detailed estimate preparation of a detailed bid level estimate requires the estimator to break the project into cost centers or cost sub elements okay so when uh, yeah, these construction companies, uh, they are going to get all those uh, working drawings uh, from the um, designer or the architect or the consultant. Uh, so then it means they, they are going to prepare the estimate and they keep all those estimates uh, according to their cost center or sub elements, you know. So they keep, okay, how much will be the piling cost, okay, like how much will be the cost for excavation, how much will be the cost for electrical work or HVAC work or the block work, so our plastering work or uh, much uh, cost for a uh, fall ceiling okay so um, uh, how much cost for uh, um, uh, heating ventilation and air conditioning system okay. so these uh, like they they prepare these costs in according to the cost center so that uh, they can sublet these uh, if they have to bring in a subcontractor so they can uh, uh, they know that how much is cost for those uh, uh, sub uh, uh, you know, the sub elements are cost centers. The estimator develops the cost on the basis of resources. So always uh, the estimator they develop the cost uh, based on how much how much labor is required, like how many man hours uh, 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 um, man hours of 
the labor force is required and how much is the material cost and how much is the subcontractors cost and how much uh, how many uh, is the, how much is the cost for equipment uh, how many hours uh, equipment this equipment should be used uh, and how much money is involved so this uh, like the exhibitor they they develop the cost based on the resources like how much resources they need okay so we, in the detail estimate is uh, like they are going to um, uh, all this based on those uh, detailed uh, drawings uh, so accuracy level is uh, that estimator they can maintain up to plus minus five percent plus minus five percent means that the uh, cost is maybe 100 million or it could go to 105 million or 95 million Indirect costs such as insurance costs, are bonds, uh, home office overheads, uh, and site of overheads are estimated. So then, uh, first they will calculate direct costs, and then they will calculate the indirect costs and how much it costs for um, like a big bond, performance bond, or uh, payment bond. So how much cost for the um, site office uh, overhead, and how much it costs for the uh, headquarter uh, or the home office overheads. So this. So now this uh, estimator generally follows certain steps in developing the estimate. Okay, in detailed estimate, they are going to follow these uh, four steps. Eh? So break the project into cost centers. Uh, maybe a cost center is uh, like filing unit or how much cost for the execution or electrical work. Eh? So these are our cost centers. Estimate the quantities. Eh? So we have to estimate the quantities in uh, cubic yard of earth or meter cube. So whatever the unit you are using, so usually in US they use uh, the uh, um, foot pound unit, and in other country like Saudi Arabia they are using this uh, metric system. So it's a linear meter, uh, linear meter, linear foot uh, for piping, or uh, the procedure is called quantity data. Okay, so if we are just calculating the how much quantities of material are required, so it means we are doing the quantity data. Now we know the quantities, uh, so per unit, uh, like a cubic meter of earth uh, for execution, or for cubic meter, uh, cubic foot uh, of concrete, uh, cubic yard of concrete, or linear meter of those uh, pipe, like um, for water supply pipe, uh, you know, six inch, uh, eight inch, uh, okay, ten inch, uh, whatever the pipe with the diameter we should mention, you know, so then we multiply with that linear fit, uh, linear fit uh, with the, that uh, uh, cost. Okay. So it's uh, price or quantities is determined in step two on a price per unit or lump sum basis. So we can, uh, uh, you know, to prepare the estimate, we have to multiply those uh, quantities uh, per unit uh, per cubic yard okay, or per cubic fit. So, or we can uh, decide, okay, what is the lump sum price uh, that we can get from the market, uh, like what is the price for this uh, door, okay, what is the price for this window, okay. So, and then how many, how many doors and windows are there, so we can calculate the total price. So, calculate the total price for each car center, so then we will calculate the price uh, separately for each car center, so that we know that uh, the that, um, execution cost, total cost is this much, okay, filing work, total cost is this much, okay? uh, electrical work, total cost is this much. So, estimate summarizes the values for each car center on a summary sheet, <laughs> that's what they have shown in the picture. So, um, like here, they, they put uh, in this exhibitor, uh, um, uh, they will make the cost. Uh, so, um, for example, as uh, you can see the number five uh, code that is the steel. Okay? So, how many man hours are required, and what is that? So, based on those man hours, um, like here, uh, uh, structural steel, they have 1,653 uh, um, man hours, okay, working hours required for the labor. So then labor cost will become like 18,768. And, uh, and the material cost is, uh, material cost is uh, 15,133. So we will add up the labor cost and the material cost, the total cost will become uh, uh, 33,901. Okay. Similarly, we can see the, like say for example, filing. Okay. So filing work, uh, there are the man hours required, there is a labor cost and there is a material cost. Uh, and there is a subcontractor cost, and there is a owner. They are going to supply some uh, some material for this uh, 
so we can add all these things uh, you know what is the uh, labor and material and subcontractor and owner so we have at least uh, 127,976. Similarly, electrical work, uh, there is a uh, subcontractor, uh, so we, we are going to sublet uh, electrical work 126,542, so total cost is uh, 126,542. Or uh, maybe a painting, uh, so this also we are going to sublet, uh, so it's uh, 14,034. Uh, there is a fire proofing, uh, so we have this material cost and subcontractor cost, so it's uh, total one thousand six hundred forty dollars. And similarly, other uh, so if we can add all these uh, direct costs, okay, we can have this total direct cost become four one nine five zero zero. Then there are the uh, indirect costs. Indirect costs like uh, there is a um, construction tools uh, that uh, contractor will supply those tools. Uh, to the labor force, so this is 7361. Uh, there is a yield uh, payroll for the labor and labor burden, so it's uh, 16,580. And uh, there is going to be uh, field supervision cost uh, from the, uh, by the um, so field supervision cost. Uh, and there is a home office expenses, uh, so by this uh, we can also calculate total indirect cost. How much is the total indirect cost for this uh, project? Uh, and we can include, uh, like, uh, there is a uh, you know, how much there is uh, overhead and profit, uh, uh, how much there is uh, overhead and profit, uh, including their uh, labor cost and material cost and uh, subcontractor cost and uh, owner cost. Uh, we can also add contingency for unforeseen work or to get a risk. So by this way, we will get the total project cost estimate at 521,482. So this is like a summary sheet. And but each item will have a detailed calculation with the backup so for the detailed estimate. So now a uh, little uh, talk about the work packages, like, uh, you know, because we are going to sublet these work. So a work package is a scope of work that represents uh, a well-defined part of the project, which can be measured and controlled, and which uh, has clearly specified beginning and completion uh, states. Like uh, we can uh, define when it's going to begin and when it's going to end. So this is uh, like piling work, say for example. So these are like work packages we are going to design. Work packages are the smallest unit of work uh, that a project can be broken down into when creating your work breakdown structure. Okay. So we have to decide work breakdown structure, like this is a, a you know, a design, okay. This is piling work. Okay. Um, so this is a brick work. Okay. So this is a, a, like plastering, you know. Uh, the, this is a, a fall ceiling work, okay. this is a, a block work. Okay. So, it's uh, all uh, uh, under these WBS uh, when we prepare schedule. We have learned this in detail before. So, under these WBS, we are going to make the activities you know, for those, uh, and we are going to assign costs for those activities. A WBS is a deliverable oriented decomposition of a project into manageable components. Okay. So this like we can submit this is uh, electrical work okay this is a plumbing work okay? this is at grade road work okay um, so this is a, a, a column you know or this is a slab or these are girders okay? uh, we determine the cost of each work package separately okay so this uh, we keep uh, our work package separately if we have to bring a, a subcontractor so we can bring a, a subcontractor you know, for those the work packages. Okay, you know, uh, so going to take off, as I said in the beginning, that uh, very important that we should be first uh, able to make a quantity take off. Now, in your book, uh, they are putting uh, the way that uh, quantities are calculated from the drawings. Okay, we have to calculate how much quantity of concrete. So, when they prepare these uh, sheets, uh, they use the uh, units, you know, whatever the units. So, they are taking an uh, example. Uh, uh, in your book, uh, they have shown that uh, there is a small wall construction uh, and with the concrete masonry units. Uh, and this wall has there as a, a concrete uh, foundation first, uh, and then there is a block work, uh, and then at the end they have uh, also uh, concrete uh, uh, you know, at the top. Uh, so
so material takeoff sheet, they have shown a material takeoff sheet for the small ball. Uh, uh, ball. So figure for 70.4 uh, is uh, like this, uh, this is a small ball, figure 70.4. So uh, we can see the elevation also and see the section of this wall. It's uh, concrete metric unit uh, 8 uh, inches by 8 inches by 16 inches. Uh, and the wall thickness is 8 inches. Uh, so there is a, a footing uh, is uh, with the reinforced concrete, uh, uh, two foot wide uh, and one foot uh, thick uh, footing. And at the top also there is a beam that uh, is uh, one foot uh, thick and there is a uh, two uh, reinforcement inside. So the um, thickness of this beam is uh, eight inches. Okay. So from the footing is like uh, a little extended. Uh, this uh, length is given 14 foot uh, 8 inches across uh, one foot uh, on this side and this uh, on this side. Like this is the footing uh, for this wall. So let's just go back. Uh, a material take up sheet. So then after this, uh, they have also a material take up sheet is shown. This one is the material take up sheet. Okay. Um, activity materialist. Okay. So material take up sheet uh, is show uh, material take up sheet for the small wall. So there is a wall uh, that figure is 70.4 is given in figure 70.5. Material take up sheet is uh, in figure 70.5. Material take up sheet is given. So uh, with uh, LF like linear fit, uh, their unit is uh, when they write in the sheet uh, LF means linear fit. Okay? For volume like they write uh, BF means uh, board board foot, okay? uh, a unit for number that equal to 1 by 12th of the cubic foot of that uh, wood. So this, this is for the number and they use the BF. Uh, CY is the cubic yard, uh, uh, cubic yard for concrete and then uh, GL they use for gallon okay? and EA they are using for each or for numbers. So with this like they will prepare this uh, um, Material take up sheet. So, for say, for example, if we uh, go to that uh, material take up sheet, it's uh, mm -hmm. just uh, taking the example like this from, from, from that, uh, this uh, wall. And if we just take this uh, quantity of concrete, is then uh, so how we calculate quantity of concrete? We know that uh, the uh, concrete is uh, this, uh, 14 uh, feet 8 inches. Uh, then we add one foot this and uh, one foot this, so this will become uh, so eight inches we divided by twelve, so this will become uh, fourteen point six seven, and plus uh, two, so total um, will be like sixteen point uh, six seven, and then it, uh, um, you know width is two feet, uh, so multiply by two and thickness is one, so we can get uh, thirty three point three um, uh, foot cube of uh, concrete and then we divide it by by 27 like uh, one foot is uh, make it yard okay. yard so one, uh, mm, uh, one yard is equal to three foot okay. so we divide three by three by three so it's uh, 27 so 33.3 divided by 27 we will get 1.3 cubic yard of uh, 1.3 cubic yard of uh, concrete for the for the footing so by this version, we, uh, if we see the this uh, that at the top, is there is a beam uh, given. So it's just uh, 0 0.3 cubic yard. So it means uh, what's the dimension of the beam is uh, like uh, they have uh, shown here. Total dimension of this beam is uh, 14 feet uh, 8 inches. Okay. So 14.67 when we divide 8 inches by 12, so it will become 14.67 is the length of the beam. And uh, the thickness is just one foot, uh, and then uh, uh, you know this beam is just uh, uh, eight inches uh, thick. So eight by twelve is zero point six seven. Then we divide, so we can get the quantity of concrete, and we have to divide it by um, to make it uh, uh, you know for the um, we will divide it uh, uh, by. Like how much is the, is the uh, dimension? So by these uh, uh, same like the plot work. Uh, so we will get this uh, 0 0.35. Uh, okay, 35. So um, this is the way we get uh, complete for this. Uh, 
So what he is, uh, like I mentioned, then they are also going to give uh, just a summary uh, for our recap sheet, uh, show total quantities, sub quantities, and waste. Okay. So they have shown another uh, you know, sheet here, uh, where they have uh, uh, shown this uh, uh, sub quantity, and they have shown the waste. Uh, so how much is waste? Uh, like uh, 53.8 waste is the uh, 10%. So we can multiply this quantity by 1.1. 1. 1, uh, 1. 10%, so it will become total quantity will become 60. So similarly, the waste is given, so we can find that total quantity. Okay, this is the way that uh, for uh, mm. so as summary, a recap sheet shows the total quantities, sub quantities, and waste. Okay. So, but in practice, you know, we will, uh, we will actually solve a number of um, numericals uh, later to understand these things in uh, very clearly. In practice, uh, most companies use computerized database okay, and spreadsheet programs to prepare final estimates. Okay. Our companies, uh, they are using uh, software, maybe software for estimation, uh, pro core or stack or pro estimation, uh, builder, trend, uh, plan, swift, uh, sage estimation. So there are these uh, softwares are available. So companies are using uh, these uh, softwares to prepare their estimate for their bid. And, or they are using spreadsheet, Excel sheet uh, for preparing their bid estimate. Okay. So with this, we will move forward uh, and we will make a uh, practice to the, uh, the questions. Uh, inshallah. Uh, uh, no, uh, here we are going to learn about how we will make a, a square foot estimate. Okay, so the question and uh, these are numerical problems. Uh, so numerical problems will explain. Uh, okay, how the we are going to get. Uh, uh, how they are going to um, you know learn about how to prepare a square foot estimate. Okay, what the question is. Uh, Calculate the average and weighted unit cost per square foot for the project uh, data shown and determine the cost of uh, 2,700 square foot of project. Now what is data is given like the five projects, uh, their total cost is given and their um, size square foot area is given for each project or five projects from the historical data. So from this historical data, uh, by using this historical data, we have to calculate the cost of a new project that is a 2,700 square foot area. Uh, size of this project is a new project is a 2,700 square foot. Uh, and we have to calculate uh, the average cost and weighted average cost for uh, the new project. Okay, this is the question. And let's see who will apply. The solution is uh, like we have the total cost of the project uh, and size. Okay. So by this way, we divide this total cost by the size of this project, uh, like this 6,450,000 divided by 2,580. So we get the cost per square foot is 2,500. Similarly, for other projects, so we get uh, this uh, uh, cost per square foot is uh, 2,600 for the second project. For the third project, uh, we divide this uh, total cost uh, with uh, 2100 and we are going to get uh, uh, per cost per square foot is 2300. So for the fourth project is uh, we, we divide the cost uh, with uh, 1850 and the per square uh, foot cost is uh, 2100. Okay. Fifth project uh, per square foot cost is uh, 2400. So these five projects we have cost per square foot. We add up these all these costs, uh, it will become a per square foot cost total will become uh, 11,900 and we divide it by five. Okay. Average cost per square foot. So, so every cost per square foot, uh, so if we divide this uh, cost per square foot, we, so we get uh, 2,380. Okay. So this is the average cost per square foot. Now we know that new projects uh, area is uh, 2,700. So we multiply with the uh, average cost, uh, 2,380. So it means the new new project uh, that is area is uh, 2,700, and it's going to cost us uh, six million four twenty six thousand. Uh, uh, you know whatever the unit is, uh, real or dollars. Okay. Now the um, uh, weighted average uh, unit cost. Okay. So we how we calculate the weighted average unit cost just like we will apply the formula that we use uh, in the part. Uh, so it's uh, it's uh, no optimistic 
cost of the minimum cost, optimistic cost, and four times of the most likely cost, the average cost plus uh, pessimistic cost, okay, divided by six above are four items. So optimistic cost, four times of the most likely cost, plus uh, pessimistic cost, uh, so what six, six items divided by six, uh, so like optimistic minimum cost per square foot in these five projects is 2,100. 2,100 plus four times of the average cost, 2,380 plus uh, pessimistic cost. How much is the highest cost per square foot is uh, project number two have uh, 2,600. The projects, they are uh, less than this one. So this is the pessimistic cost, uh, 2,600 divided by six. So we get the uh, weighted average cost is uh, 2,370. So remember that it always a weighted average cost is a little less than the average cost. Okay, little less than the average cost. So now we know that the weighted, weighted average cost is 2370. So for the new project, uh, uh, we multiply what is the area of the new project is 2700 multiplied by 2370. So it's uh, like this uh, weighted average cost of the new project will be thousand. So by this way, like we learn how to apply the, this uh, method uh, of making a cost of a per square fit. So let's see as we saw another question. Uh, to um, for the preliminary estimate, preliminary estimate, uh, what the question given is, uh, example is uh, that prepare uh, a preliminary estimate of an engineering department, okay, like the new college of uh, engineering building for 800 students, okay. So we have to make a preliminary estimate for 800 students. Uh, in order to assess the amount of fund uh, based on the following particulars. So this, uh, these particulars are given. Carpet area required per student is uh, 1.2 square meter. Area of corridor and uh, entrance hall, etc. Area for like for all corridors, uh, uh, entrance, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, so this is 20% uh, of the plinth area. Plinth area is, uh, when we cut the uh, plan view at the doors and window level so that we can see that uh, in this, uh, where is the corridor, what are the rooms uh, size, and we can see where is the door and windows. So that level is plinth, plinth level. Area of walls, uh, area of walls is 14% of the plinth area is given. Plinth area rate of construction is given as 7,500 per square meter. So now uh, they have uh, given the cost of water supply is 5% of the building cost. Cost of sanitation, uh, sewerage, you know, it's 7% of the building cost. Cost of electrification, electrical work is 12% of the building cost. Cost of approach road and boundary wall for this uh, uh, building is 8% uh, uh, of the building cost. Then they have given two more items is contingency and work charge establishment shall be 5% and 2.5% of the total uh, uh, cost respectively. Okay. So contingency like for any unforeseen things. Uh, and then work charge means uh, that uh, if we have to do some work uh, that we can uh, employ uh, labor on daily basis, and then consultant will monitor uh, how, how many workers are working. So that, that will be work charge establishment. So that cost is 2.5%. So when this data is given, so we have to prepare that preliminary estimate. Okay. So let's see the solution is simple. Like let's assume that total plinth area is X. Okay. Total plinth area is X. Total plinth area is what is total plinth area? The carpet area per student, which we need the inside the room area, plus area of corridor, the entrance hall, all the corridors, plus area of all the walls. So this will make the total plinth area of the building. So now we assume total plinth area is X, uh, then uh, carpet area is 1.2 multiplied by 800. We have to prepare, uh, you know, 1.2 square meter area per student. So we have total 800 student multiplied by 800 plus uh, area of corridor uh, entrance hall is 20% of the plinth area. So 0 0.20 multiplied by X, uh, then area wall is 14% uh, of the plinth area. So 0 0.14, 14% 
zero point one four multiplied by x. Okay. So this becomes uh, nine sixty plus zero point two x plus zero point one four x. This will become zero point three four x. Now we take uh, this zero point three four x on the other side. We take x common. So one minus zero point three four. So and we divide that uh, on the other side, so we can get the x value as uh, the total area of the building uh, length area is uh, 1,454 uh, square meter. So we know the uh, rate is given per square meter is 7,500. So building cost is uh, we multiply this area with that uh, 7,500. So it's about uh, uh, 10 million uh, 909,090.91 uh, So this is like the building on the building cost. Now from this building cost, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, 10 million, 10.91 million. So uh, from this building cost, uh, what supply cost is 5% of the building cost. So 5%, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, multiply the building cost. So total cost of what supply is 544,454.55. Cost of sanitation is 7% the uh, building cost, so 0 0.7 multiplied the building cost, so we got the sanitation cost. Cost of electrification is 12% uh, of the building cost, so we 12% uh, multiply building cost, so we got cost of approach, road, and boundary wall, 8% okay, of the building cost we got this one so we add up this total cost it becomes 14 million four hundred thousand okay now from this uh, total cost they have given in the if you remember in the previous uh, um, these costs were given building cost but contingency and work charge is given with the total cost respectively okay so two items were given with the total cost now we know the total cost is uh, 14 million four hundred thousand so contingency is five percent then contingency become uh, 720,000. Work charge establishment is 2.5%, uh, 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 so it's uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.025, uh, multiply with the uh, total uh, uh, building cost. So it's uh, 360,000. So the grand total will become total cost of the preliminary estimate will be 15,480,000. So this is like how we can calculate uh, the preliminary estimate. Now. Next, we are going to practice some more uh, problems uh, based on the uh, um, like uh, quantity takeoff. Uh, so um, for the concrete footing, if we have a concrete footing, so how we we'll calculate the volume if it's uh, you know footing is uh, uh, like how much is the length of the wall and width uh, and how much is depth okay, footing. So we can have uh, the, um, the cubic uh, feet uh, or cubic yard measured in cubic yard. So uh, when we calculate so concrete, we measure in cubic yard or cubic meter. So then uh, from this uh, another book, uh, there is a estimating in building construction. We are going to take a number of examples from this book. Uh, to learn about, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, how to make a quantity take off uh, from a uh, number of questions. So let's see the first question from this uh, uh, example is 10.1 uh, in that uh, uh, example in the, in the book of estimating and building construction. So they have given this uh, sketch, okay. uh, drawing is given that uh, these uh, drawings, uh, this is like you can see here is the wall A, wall B, wall C and D, wall E, F uh, and G, H, uh, I, J, K and L. So this is like the uh, outer wall uh, for the whole building, the outer wall. So now uh, a length of, uh, and this is a, uh, we are uh, continuous footing. And this is a uh, continuous footing. Now footing section is given. Section is uh, like width of this footing is three feet two inches. And uh, depth is just uh, uh, one feet. Uh, depth is just uh, one feet. So three feet two inches is the width, uh, and depth is this. Uh, so now, how long it will be like? Uh, we can start from uh, from wall A and B and C. So C, we should be careful about the corners because these length uh, 
in this drawing, they are shown like the outer length, okay? So without uh, having a uh, convex uh, the um, corners, they are not counting two times. Okay? Remember this thing that they are not counting the corners uh, two times. So you should be careful uh, that uh, the corners you should not count uh, two times. So the wall A is uh, uh, length is uh, 39 feet 10 inches, wall B is uh, 34 feet 4 inches, wall C is 14 feet 10 inches, C, D is uh, 21 feet 10 inches, uh, and E is uh, 18 feet 2 inches. Okay. Similarly, other walls up to L, the whole uh, starting from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. Okay. So uh, total, uh, uh, total length uh, become uh, so first we should, uh, when we have to make, uh, like we add, we should add all the inches first, okay? and then divide it by 12, uh, uh, and then we, we should make uh, what is, how much is carryover, and minus those uh, fit, uh, multiply again with the 12, uh, so we can get uh, uh, inches. Okay? And then carryover, we take uh, to the next, uh, so we can add all these fit plus carryover, so total length of this wall become uh, 337, Fit four inches long. Okay, all the walls starting from A to L, all the, the outer wall length will become uh, uh, this much. Okay, for the for the footing. Okay, footing is uh, width is three foot two inches and height uh, thickness of this footing is just uh, one feet. Okay. So we will apply how much is concrete determine quantity of concrete in the three foot two inches wide continuous footing. Total length of wall we have computed. So now 4 divided by 12 plus uh, 337, so it will be 337.333. So cross section is the uh, footing is uh, 3 for 2 inches, but thickness is 1 feet. Uh, so cross section area is uh, 2 divided by 12 plus 3. Okay, so this will be 3.167. 3.1667. So then uh, is uh, this is the cross section area. So volume of concrete and uh, cross section area multiplied by the length, length of the wall. So it's uh, going to become uh, 3.167 multiplied by 337.333. So it's uh, 1068 cubic feet. Okay, 1068 cubic feet, so like foot cube. So now to make it cubic yard, we have to divide it by 12, 12, uh, and we have to divide it, uh, no, foot, uh, we have to make a yard, so we should divide it by three, three and three, so it means uh, by 27, three, three, nine, nine, multiply by three is 27, so we should divide it by 27, and then we will get this, uh, uh, you know, 39.6 cubic yard, 39.6 cubic yard, so then they say it's, uh, you can add uh, the wastage, like when you order concrete, uh, so first time they bring the growth uh, and, and the concrete pump, uh, and there is a uh, you know, like the end, and also some kind of uh, some concrete go waste that you can consume. So you can add five percent, it's given like that. You can add five percent waste for this, uh, and volume of concrete become uh, 39.6. Uh, 5% adding waste means we will multiply it to 1.05. So this will increase this quantity to 5%. And total uh, volume of concrete become 42 cubic yard. So with this, uh, all the footing, uh, I mean, this footing, you know, that is uh, one foot uh, thick, uh, three foot wide, uh, and two or three feet and two inches wide. So just one foot thick. Uh, so all the footing, uh, we need the uh, volume of concrete is 42 cubic yard. 42 cubic yard. This is like how we calculate the quantity of concrete. So we just let's see another example is a, another example is 10.2 is a, about the spread footing. Okay. About the spread footing is uh, like they, they have uh, you know in the, in the sketch there are uh, uh, spread footing uh, in the here is the one that spread footing is shown. Okay. So. Uh, um, how we will calculate a uh, spread footing uh, is uh, spread footing area is uh, like the section is given three feet by three feet. Okay, so dimension is three feet uh, footing and thickness is one feet. Okay? Thickness is uh, one feet concrete. So then determine the quantity of concrete in three feet by three feet and one feet thick spread footing. These are isolated uh, uh, footings. So volume of concrete becomes three feet by three feet uh, 
by first thickness is 150. So length, width, and height. Okay, so it will become nine cubic feet. Nine cubic feet divided by by 27, uh, 27. So we will get uh, 0 0.33 cubic yard. Okay, so we converted foot cube into cubic yard. Okay, so um, foot cube into cubic yard. So uh, one yard is equal to three feet. Okay, so that's why we divided it by 27. So three multiplied by three multiplied by three is then uh, twenty-seven. So divided by twenty-seven, we get zero point three three cubic yard. So add five percent waste again. If we add five percent waste, then volume of concrete become uh, uh, zero point three three multiplied by one point zero five. It's zero point three five. Okay. So now they say the uh, usually if you have to cost concrete and you uh, have to order from the batching plant. So batching plant, they say that uh, they are not uh, uh, selling concrete less than one cubic yard. Okay. So it means if you order from the batching plant, they will send you one cubic yard of concrete, or they will they will cost you uh, for one cubic yard. So that's why we write it, uh, make a concrete say we have to pay for one cubic yard. Okay. Of course, we will, uh, you have to pay for one cubic yard, but they may send less. Uh, okay, you can use uh, up to whatever. The required quantity you need 0 0.35 cubic yard. So let's see the other uh, example is uh, uh, there is a uh, now above the footing, uh, just like we have seen uh, before. If you go back, if you go back uh, uh, this sketch uh, that uh, so now up to ground level, uh, there is uh, this concrete wall. Okay. The concrete wall is 3 feet 8 inches high. And the thickness is of this wall is one foot two inches. Okay. Remember this thing. Thickness of this is one foot two inches, and height is three foot eight inches. And uh, so, because now the uh, thickness is one foot two inches, so the length uh, of this uh, will become different you know, uh, for that. Uh, so, this we have covered before. So, foundation wall, uh, okay, we are going to find concrete. Now the dimension, because the, uh, this uh, U uh, is a thickness is just uh, not 3 to 2 inches, but thickness is 1 to 2 inches. Uh, so the dimensions for these, uh, like uh, they are different, you know, 38 feet 10 inches, and then B is 32 feet 4 inches, C is 13 feet 10 inches, and D will be like 25 feet, uh, okay. and E is uh, 16 feet 2 inches. So these are the dimensions. Uh, for this, uh, um, uh, you know, for the foundation wall. Okay. Now, for this, uh, in this, uh, another question, they say that uh, wall B, this area is a basement. Okay. Wall B, this area is a basement area, and the height of this uh, wall will be different. Okay. So, with this, uh, we will calculate uh, how much uh, up to ground level complete required for the foundation wall. So when you see this, uh, like uh, walls are given and length, uh, so wall A is 38 feet 10 inches. Okay, so now because uh, it is one to two inches, so length uh, is going to vary. But it's not same like before uh, when the footing uh, is uh, three feet uh, two inches wide. So now uh, B is basement, so B is not here. Then C uh, length of wall is given 13 feet 10 inches from the previous sketch. Uh, so like um, this is figure 10.8 that we have this one 10.8 so uh, c is uh, uh, 13 feet to 10 inches so c is 30 feet 10 inches okay. uh, here 13 feet 10 inches okay. so d is 25 feet so this is like a, a d wall d is uh, 23 feet 10 inches e is 16 to 2 inches mm -hmm. f is uh, 32 feet 8 inches uh, Similarly up to L. So it's a B is not here, but C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, all the wall length is, uh, is given. Now determine the quantity of concrete uh, on building perimeter wall. So wall thickness of this uh, wall is uh, one to two inches. Okay. So how we calculate the volume is the uh, length, total length we have same we added up inch and then divided by 12 uh, and then uh, 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 add all these feet uh, plus carry over so it will become uh, 303 feet long. Okay. So length is 303 feet, uh, 
then is uh, a height of this uh, um, wall is three feet eight inches. Okay, height is a three foot eight inches. Like what, what we have seen before here, height is a this this is the wall we are computing from here to here. Okay, height is three foot eight inches. Thickness is a one foot two inches. Okay? So uh, up to ground level, up to ground level, and not including a B, okay? not including a B. So this um, uh, three foot eight inches height and thickness is one to two inches. So we got this uh, uh, one thousand three hundred one cubic feet. So divided by twenty seven is forty eight cubic yard. Now wall basement wall B is uh, uh, is uh, because it's a basement. Uh, so up to ground level total height will become uh, eight feet four inches. Okay. So other walls their height is three feet eight inches. But because wall B is a basement, uh, so height of this uh, wall is a uh, eight feet uh, four inches. Okay. So now volume of concrete uh, length of wall B is a uh, thirty feet four inches. Height is eight foot four inches, uh, and uh, the width is same one foot two inches. So this becomes a uh, three fifteen cubic feet, uh, or equal to eleven point seven cubic yard. Now we can add these two figures uh, for the interior wall. So the two figures is 48 plus 11.7. So we get 59.7 cubic yard. So we add 5% waste, multiply it 1.05. So we get a 63 cubic yard of concrete for the putting up to ground level. Up to ground level. Okay. So now is uh, this. So we will move uh, forward to the next example. Next example, they are talking about the grade beams. Okay, uh, there are uh, grade beams. So there are two beams at the rear corner, and like this beam is there. One is this beam, another is this one. Okay, so one beam length is uh, this beam length is 13 to 10 inches, and this beam length is 25 feet. Okay, so the uh, and the rear corner beam, uh, uh, rear corner section is given here at. Uh, uh, area corner uh, grade beam A is uh, dimensions is uh, like uh, width is uh, uh, one foot two inches and height is one foot six inches. The height is one foot six inches, and so there are two beams at the rear corner. Okay. Uh, but there is at the front also there is a beam here. So two pillars. There is a beam here, a grade beam, and this beam is a uh, length is thirty feet. Uh, and section is uh, one foot six inches and one foot six inches. So both uh, uh, like it's a square shape, you know, one foot six inches, one foot six inches. So front, uh, uh, this is a front grade beam B. Okay, front grade beam B is just one beam, uh, and these are like two beams uh, but different length. Okay, two beams but uh, different length. And section is also different. So now we have to calculate concrete for these uh, beams. Okay, how much is concrete for these beams? So then, a uh, grade beams are located in the front and uh, right rear corner of the building. The purpose is to tie the drilled pier to the building foundation. Okay, so they have like these uh, these uh, piers. Uh, so they want to tie this uh, with the with the building. And similarly, have two piers at the front. Uh, so they want to tie with the with the building. So now we are going to calculate concrete for these uh, beams. Okay. So rear uh, uh, beams, their the dimension is uh, one foot two inches by one foot six inches. So the two beams and length. One beam is twenty five feet long. Other beam is thirty feet ten inches long. Okay. So section is uh, one foot two inches and one foot six inches. One foot two inches, one foot six inches. So when we multiply, we got this uh, 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 concrete uh, 43.75 and 24.75. The other uh, front, uh, at the front, there is just one beam section is uh, one foot six inches. Okay. So section is one foot six inches, length is 30 feet. Okay. 30 feet multiplied by one foot six inches, multiplied by one foot six inches, uh, so we get this uh, 67.5. Uh, uh, Cubic feet, cubic feet. Okay. All these lengths are cubic feet. So when we multiply this, we should be careful. You know how to multiply this one for two inches. First divide two by twelve, then add one. Okay, make it five. Okay, that's six by twelve. So point five plus one. So one point five 
multiply by this, this so we will get this. So total concrete in grade beam is a, so we had all these three quantities, 43.75, 24.27, and 67.5. So total cubic fit is a 136. Total cubic fit is a 136. So we divide it by 27 to make it this is two cubic yards, it's 5.04. Now for this red beam, as a given is that we should add 8% waste. Okay? So 5.04 multiplied by 1.08, so 5.44 uh, round up, we can say we need 6 cubic yard of concrete for all these uh, three red beams. Two are at the rear corner and one is at the front. Okay? So this is the way we find the quantity of concrete by using the drawings. So students need to learn how to read drawings and how to find quantities uh, from uh, the, the drawings. Okay. So quantity of okay. Let's see another example is there. So we, now we are going to find, uh, find the cost. Okay. Cost and labor cost. Find the labor cost for placing concrete in the three feet two inch wide continuous footing. Okay. So labor cost uh, example is uh, 10.8 is given like labor cost is 13.5 dollar per hour is given. Productivity rate we know that the labor hours divided by quantity and productivity rate is given for the continuous footing is 0 0.4. So from this uh, complete quantity uh, we will take, go back to example 10.1 and complete quantity for this footing is we have calculated before. Uh, in example 10.1 is a 42 cubic, uh, cubic yard. If I go back here, uh, uh, sorry, if I go back, uh, so then we have calculated this uh, quantity of position. Like example 10.1, so volume of concrete we have calculated 42 cubic yard. Okay. So for this footing, the uh, continuous footing, we are going to calculate the cost. Okay. Uh, cost, uh, so Mm, now we know the um, productivity rate. So if we know the productivity rate, so labor hours will be equal to quantity multiplied by productivity rate. Okay, labor hours. So labor hours uh, for a quantity of concrete is 42 cubic yards. Productivity rate given is 0 0.4. Okay. So it, we multiply this uh, 42 with 0 0.4. So it means we need 17 labor hours. Okay, we need 17 labor hours. And cost is given for one labor hour cost is 13.5 per hour. Okay. So multiply by 13.5. So it means that this, this labor cost for this footing will be $229.5. Okay. $229.5 labor cost for the continuous footing. Okay. So a labor cost for placing a concrete in the continuous footing that is a uh, three foot two inches wide so this is like we we can put the uh, estimate okay how much is going to cost uh, uh, labor okay. so similarly we know the quantity of concrete if we know the rate for for one cubic uh, uh, yard of concrete we can multiply we can find the material quantity how much is the cost of a concrete uh, uh, from the etching plant if you know the cost per cubic, per cubic yard of a concrete. So we know the material cost, we, we can calculate the labor cost. Similarly, if we have a concrete pump, we know that a concrete pump is, a, what is the rate for a concrete pump per hour, so, and how many hours we are going to do, so how many equipment costs we can also calculate. Now, next we are going to discuss about rebars. Okay, this is a, you know, sometimes uh, uh, for students, sometimes it's uh, difficult to understand, but if they will pay attention so they can calculate the quantities for the rebar, the reinforcement. Take off linear fit, uh, so add 10%, 1 to 10% waste, uh, cut length generally 20 feet uh, when the factory, you know, they send reinforcement really 20 feet uh, length, uh, but uh, uh, project manager, they can order those uh, cut length from the uh, reinforcement or uh, from the rebar factory or from the uh, steel manufacturing factory when they buy when they are going to buy reinforcement. So estimated by ton. Okay, reinforcement we always calculate in number of tons. Uh, keep type of placement uh, like uh, separate. You know, we will calculate separate uh, uh, steel for the beams, columns. Uh, keep separate. You know. Mm -hmm. If strength is different, so we will also calculate uh, different if the rate is different. You know? Sometimes we use 
60 grade steel, 60,000 PSI or 40,000 PSI. So we will keep separate. No? And here they, in this table, they are going to show that uh, these are the rebar properties. So there is a bar designation. Uh, number two bar is a like plain bar. Three from three num number bar is going to start deformed bar, okay, ribbed bar. Okay. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Then nominal diameter is given, cross sectional area is given, a weight per foot is given. Okay, weight per foot of this is given. Okay, so, this is it. so we can use this table like a number five bar. Number five bar is uh, a, a weight um, will be 1.043 pounds per foot. Okay, in linear foot, uh, the weight uh, of uh, uh, this number five rib bar, its uh, no, diameter is actually, uh, you know, five by eight inches dia. Five by eight, and we say number five is five by eight inch dia. Um, this is by also four by uh, four by eight, and so it's become half. You know, similarly, here eight uh, by eight is one inch uh, dia, so weight is uh, two point six seven. So here the, this is the rebar splicing. Okay, we have to join these three bars. So splice based on number of bar dimensions. Okay, so the bar size is given. So then splice uh, is uh, we can uh, uh, you know make uh, if there is a uh, diameter is uh, uh, 24 or uh, there is a diameter is 30. So um, and then uh, splice length will be one foot uh, seven inches. So we'll when the one bar finished, we join with the other bar. We don't make bend, you know, at the edge. Yeah? So we make lap uh, splice, okay, overlap, you know. So how much will be the overlap length uh, uh, from for these the bars is uh, one foot uh, seven inches. So now with this data, we will solve this. We uh, uh, try to find out uh, uh, reinforcement uh, for the foundation. Okay. So this sketch is given a uh, 10.21 uh, footing detail. Actually. So this uh, the same dimension of footing here, like uh, 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 width is uh, this footing we have seen before that uh, this width is uh, um, three foot uh, three foot two inches. Uh, this width uh, of the footing is three foot two inches, uh, and uh, our thickness is just one foot, uh, and we know the uh, so we will calculate just for wall A. Okay. And there, the reinforcement, uh, you know, there are these the like bars, number five bars, four equal spaces. Okay. And then in the footing, uh, we have this, uh, um, uh, you know, length uh, is uh, this bar is number five uh, bars, 11 inch cent uh, center to center, 11 inch uh, center to center. Okay. So it means uh, for every uh, 11 inch, we will put another bar, another bar. So it's a uh, like because it's a, a continuous uh, footing, uh, so we will put uh, and we will calculate for just for wall A. And similarly, there is a double bar and there is also this vertical bar. So total height is three foot eight inches of this wall. So then uh, this this bar is also number five, eleven inch to center. And then these are like the bars. Uh, uh, you know, uh, is also number five bar and in Central center, like uh, these are longitudinal bar in the in the footing. So there is a uh, vertical bar, there is a longitudinal bar, and then there is a double also. Okay, double that we will put this double from here and outside. So we cast complete first this footing, and next time we cast complete fix the forward for this wall and cast complete for the upper bar. So the first we will bring this out the uh, double bar. And with this double bar, we will connect this vertical bars. Okay, vertical bar will be overlapped. So um, we will now going to calculate the reinforcement. Let's see as how we are going to calculate. Like this, uh, we will use uh, this. Uh, um, take the uh, short bar uh, from figure ten point two one. I just uh, previous figure. Uh, so the number of short bars basically. Okay? So it's uh, uh, wall A. Wall A is uh, 39 foot 10 inches uh, long. Okay. Wall A is uh, for the footing 3 foot uh, 2 inches wide. Wall length of the footing is given in example one. 
So uh, total length is uh, 39 feet, uh, 10 inches. 10 inches length. So these bars are, are uh, um, you know, uh, is uh, uh, 11 inches center center. We divide it by 11. It's uh, 44. Okay, so 44 uh, bars will become for um, for only wall A. Okay, wall A is length is uh, 39 feet, 10 inches. So divided by 11 in central center divided by 11 so it will become 44 spaces okay so we add one to get the number of bars so because we, when we have to put one here and at the edge uh, so it will uh, we increase one more okay so it will become 45 bars we need 45 bars now this is uh, how much is a uh, bar length uh, as a uh, is the uh, footing is a uh, three foot two inches okay total width is three foot two inches uh, so we cover of concrete is two inches cover from this side and two inches cover from this side. So four inches we will make less from this. So the main length of the bar will be two foot ten inches. Two foot ten inches length of one bar. You know, and that we that we will put horizontally from this way. The one bar on upper side. So total length will be two foot ten inches. Okay. So total number of bars is forty five. One bar length is two foot ten inches, so total length becomes uh, one twenty seven point five feet. So now total weight is uh, one twenty seven point five. So weight of uh, this number five bar, so far linear foot weight is one point zero four three. So just like we have seen before here. Uh, oh sorry. So uh, here uh, number five bar. Uh, weight is uh, 1.043 pounds per foot. Okay. This weight we are going to use uh, for that. Uh, uh, so 1.045 pounds per foot. So total weight will become 133 pounds. Okay. Total weight will become 133 pounds. Now this is like we are doing short bars. Now long bars, this uh, long bars we have is uh, uh, long bars. So length of long bar is uh, like total length of wall A is 39 to 10 inches. Okay. So 39 to 10 inches, uh, total bar uh, length, uh, so is uh, because we are putting this uh, number five bar, four equal spaces. So these are four bars, so multiply by four. Uh, but uh, for first uh, 39 feet, uh, uh, 39 feet, uh, five, six inches. Uh, so actually was, uh, see the length was uh, 39 feet, 10 inches. So from this, uh, we inject uh, this, uh, you know, two inches cover, two inches cover, four inch less. Uh, so this will become 39 feet, uh, 39 feet, uh, six inches. So four inches will be less for the complete cover. So, so 39 feet length of long bar will be 39 feet, six inches, four, four inches less because of the cover. So um, 39 feet 6 inches means 6 divided by 12, it's 0 0.5 plus 39, 39.5 multiplied by these 4 equals 4 bars. So total length will become 158 linear fit. So with the total 158 linear fit multiplied by the weight for linear fit, uh, 1.043 is 165 pounds. So total total weight we add these two figures is uh, 298 pounds. Okay, 298 pounds. Uh, so then add 10 percent waste. The okay, 10 percent waste means that we add one point multiply this 1.1 1 .1 is 328 pounds. Okay, 328 uh, uh, pounds. Okay. So this is uh, 328 pounds. Uh, uh, sorry. So we added only this uh, 328. Uh, Pounds, um, like uh, waste only in this one, but we forgot to add waste in this one also. But to, so total reinforcement uh, for the footing is uh, we add this uh, uh, 133 plus uh, 328. We can also add a waste for this uh, also, and uh, this figure will be different. So total um, reinforcement uh, is uh, 461, like for the for the footing. Now we will because. Footing we will construct first, okay. Then next, next we will build the wall. This uh, three foot eight inches height, okay. So now we will calculate over how much is the reinforcement for dowels and how much is vertical bar and how much these, uh, uh, you know, longitudinal uh, bars, uh, uh, ten inches and two center spacing the longitudinal bar in this footing. Uh, uh, so uh, wall length is uh, thirty nine point uh, ten. 
so when this wall is uh, up you know so the, the length become 38 uh, because it's uh, um, you know thickness is the uh, one foot uh, two inches uh, for this wall uh, so in total length of wall a is a uh, 38 foot 10 inches okay now vertical bar spacer vertical bar spacer, 11 inch center to center okay? 11 inch on center uh, so then the vertical bar spacing is uh, 38 feet uh, 10 inches divided by 11 so 42 spaces plus add one so it's uh, 43 bars okay so bar length is uh, like we have uh, three foot eight inches height okay? three foot eight inches height minus cover is a uh, two inch uh, bottom and two inch upper four inch cover is uh, so total length uh, left is three feet uh, four inches okay? so 43 bars length is uh, 3 feet 4 inches so total length become 143 total weight become 143 multiplied by the weight per foot is uh, 1.043 149 so add 10 percent waste uh, 10 percent waste for uh, and for lab so it's a uh, 10 percent waste is 1.1 so it's now 164 pounds now the horizontal spacing Okay. Just, this is what we get vertical bar horizontal so it's uh, it's, it's uh, total uh, uh, horizontal height is uh, 3 feet 8 inches divided by 10 foot center to center so it's 4.5 so we use the uh, 5 bars and add one for the um, uh, you know uh, space to make uh, on the edge we, because we have to put bars uh, not only spacing but one at the starting space and one at the end space uh, so we increase one. So these are these are total six bars. Okay. So total bar length will become uh, uh, this uh, 38 to 10 inches minus four inches is the cover. So uh, it will become 38 inches, six inches, uh, 38 foot six inches length. Uh, multiply by these uh, six bars. Okay, six bars. Uh, so for wall A. Okay. So total length will become these uh, six bars. Uh, uh, horizontally, uh, just like uh, you know, these these, these bars, what you know, change these bars uh, uh, for wall A length is uh, 38 to 10 inches, so we make the cover less uh, on both sides of the wall. So this will length will be 231. Okay, so total weight 231 multiplied by 1.043 is 241. Okay. So add 10 percent waste to this uh, 1.1 multiplied by 241 is 265. So we have these uh, two bars now. Uh, left is dowels. Okay, dowels. Uh, we are going to use dowel length is uh, three feet. Okay, so like one foot will go inside the footing and uh, two foot will remain up. So dowels uh, they are uh, three feet uh, long. Okay. So number of dowels. Uh, Number of dowels same like what we have seen is uh, uh, you know here uh, how many bars we have here is uh, um, uh, 43 bars okay 43 bars so um, is a vertical bars 43 so we need 43 dowels okay? 43 dowels because these vertical bars will be connected with the uh, dowels okay? so these 43 dowels uh, 43 dowels each uh, length is three feet is 129. Okay? So total weight is 129 multiplied by 1.043, so it's 135 pounds. Okay. Add 5% waste uh, from for these uh, during the cut length or uh, during lap, 5% uh, waste from steel will go wasted. So then it will be 1.05 multiplied by 135 is 144. So now all these, uh, how much is reinforcement uh, uh, weight required in the in the upper uh, wall of the footing, you know, so we add these three, three uh, items. Uh, one is, uh, you know, 142 is these the uh, dowels. So the other one is that this is a horizontal bar, six bars, and then these are the vertical bars, uh, 43 vertical bars. Uh, so we add these three figures, uh, 164, uh, 265, and then the dowels, and then the dowels, uh, 142. So we have this uh, 571 pounds. So this is the way we are going to calculate uh, the reinforcement uh, accurately. You know, like uh, we first calculate how much is the length of those bars that we are going to use, and then we multiply it by the weight per linear bit. Okay. So we can add all these. Uh, that, uh, this is just for wall A. Okay. So 
wall A, uh, we can get very close with this. Uh, we are going to um, end this uh, lecture. Uh, you know, so in this, uh, we have learned how to make a find out uh, quantities and what are the important things uh, when we go through the estimating process uh, we are going to really estimate uh, for the project okay it's very important so every student they need to pay attention that how they can uh, find out the accurate quantities and then they can find out the rates uh, at least from three vendors so they should get the rates uh, per unit uh, and then multiply those quantities with those rates uh, that, uh, for each, uh, for the, especially for the bid preparation, you have to see what is the, uh, okay, how much is labor cost and material cost and equipment cost uh, or overheads. Uh, so first we calculate the direct cost and then the indirect cost and then add the profit. Okay, by this way, you can uh, calculate the uh, cost uh, of your project. So usually uh, for every project, uh, the consultant is going to give you the bill of quantities. So you need to see how they have prepared the bill of quantities, okay? So how each item will be built uh, based on the given uh, drawings. Uh, so what are the construction procedure, construction methodology uh, involved for each uh, uh, bill of quantities. So then, uh, um, so the contractor should use his experience uh, that uh, how they have to build the project according to the drawings and specifications and then prepare their bid estimate. So with this we are going to close this one so allow me to say at the end like for a majlis like subhanakallah ma bihamdika inshallah la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk thank you very much see you next time inshallah